Hi everybody, I'm Sherry from Sherry Jones Designs. I want to show you today how to make one of these. They're very easy to make. It's a great beginner project. If you, even if you've never touched a sewing machine before, that's how easy these are to make. So the first thing we're gonna need is two men's shirts. Okay, because we're gonna use the sleeves. There's another project that uses the, the middle parts. So basically, and that will be another video. Basically, if you get two men's shirts, the bigger the better, I usually use 2X, you can make two outfits. And so think how much fun that is. You can go to like the Goodwill or garage sales and you can pick up the fabric that you like the feel of, the fabric you like the color of, buy two, come home and make two new outfits that you will pay in my store, let's see, what do you, $130 for these two outfits. And the pinafore is harder to make, but the sleeve tunic, super simple, and that's what we're gonna work on today. First thing you're gonna do is take your shirt under a bright white LED light. I use a lamp and a bright white bulb, and that allows me to see the stains. And once I've decided that it, the shirt is okay, if there is a stain and it's down low or, or it's in a, you know, it's not too bad, you can still use the shirt. You will just either cover it, cut it out, and put a patch over it. But for today, I'm just going to, these are fine. And so what we're going to do here, I don't know, let me try this shirt here. It's easier to see. We are going to cut this sleeve off. And you see this line here and here. We're going to cut on the inside of this. That way if it frays, it stops here at the thread. Now once we cut that off, we will have a, like this, a sleeve. And then we're gonna cut the sleeve apart. And where you cut is right there. You follow this double seam all the way up, clear up here, you just go straight. I'll show you how, how I do that. So you, I usually start here, and then you just follow that seam, trying not to cut the, into the double part, just in a single layer, like that. It's easier to follow it from the inside, so I usually cut the top and then follow it through from the inside. And hopefully I'm getting this on camera. All right. And then once you have your sleeve, I lay it like this. And then I follow that seam up from the inside all the way like this. And then you just go straight up. And there's your, there's one of your sleeves. And there's always two buttons. I try to make sure it's on the furthest out button, but if you're really small, you might want to use that one. And you can tell by laying all your sleeves together, like if they were going to be sewn, and then measuring, and you'll know how big around the, that band's going to be. And the top band fits above the bust line. So, okay, we'll move, I'll get the other two cut and we'll move on. Okay, the fabric's good otherwise though. It's nice. This is actually a flannel. This one's a flannel and this one is not. This is, um, I love the print of this. I picked up that gold and that's so nice. So I'm going to try to figure out a way to use it. It looks like this shirt has not been worn that much. This was probably, it could have been a misprint from the factory. I don't know. But I hate to throw it away. So we're going to see what we can do. And 
do it with just pulling the strings. That one came up nice. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they'll just sometimes they'll just sit there. And if you're a beginner sewer, I recommend a very simple machine. Um, something that's got because I love zigzag, at least a straight stitch and a zigzag. Okay. And you'll do that for each one, making sure this button is done up. And the reason I pull them is because they do gap, especially flannels. Flannels are bad for gapping. And so I just kind of like that and then get going. All right, and then this step, we are going to sew our sleeves together. So what I do, I usually like to put this seam one here over one that doesn't have a seam. And you can do that all the way around, except the last one is a little different. So let's just, this one I usually use zigzag. Oops, oops, I'm driving backwards. Okay, pull my strings, that gets me off there. Okay, on your last seam, I put the bulk behind it, the machine, like this, and you're going to come up with two seams that are thick, that are the edges. And so what you're going to do is, it doesn't matter, you can make like this, the one that's over here that's on top, over here, but it, it doesn't really matter because... They look cute either way, so, but that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a match, back stitch, and just sew through all those layers. And just pull it forwards as I go, making sure that I'm on top. Okay, so now that we have our pieces sewn together, you're going to notice one side has more buttons than the other. This is going to be our front, the one with the most buttons. And I usually use, like you could, you know, you could do like this if you preferred. My stuff to cover that. And then this would be our front. So you decide which one you want to the outside. For me, I usually put the dark to the outside. I think it's a little bit more slimming effect and for me more eye appealing, but everybody's different. And then you're going to cut the collars apart, which we're going to do now on this one. There's a lot of times there's a little button here. And I cut the collar off and I use the collars as the straps. But you could use anything you want. Um, you could use denim accents or whatever was, you know, whatever you had that you wanted to use. So I cut the, there's a seam here and I'm cutting right on that side of that seam. Okay, and we'll use the backs of these shirts later. And then to cut them apart, you'll see a seam right there. And we're going to follow that seam. There will be some fraying um, when you wash this, but it'll eventually stop because it's at that seam, so it won't go any further. Okay. Sometimes I will have the same color going up. You could actually use it just like this, or I'll lay this one on top and make one that matches. You know, just cut it out and zigzag the edges. But I think today we'll just use these two for this one and you could actually use these two for your other one if you didn't want to buy a um, like a denim or anything for the pinafore when I make it so you could actually make the entire thing uh, two garments and two shirts okay now you notice how these curve there they have a curve to them because it's a collar so I can't put you know two like this they're going both <laughs> going that way so I will decide one of them, 
I will flip and take the button off and put it on the other put the button back on the other side. That makes it turn the right direction. Okay, for the pinafore, we'll take our shirts that we've now cut the sleeves out of and we cut the collar off of them. And we're going to cut the back out. And to do that, we're going to follow the seam on the inside all the way down. like this and you actually use part of the back for the pockets and that's why this step is being shown here you think hey we weren't going to be making that well, I know but we got to cut it apart to get the, the pieces we need so we have the back and that leaves us, when we fold the shirt out, it's going to look like this. And you may recognize it right away if you bought one of my tunics. And then here is the front, like that. The parts we're going to be using for the pockets will come from cutting like this. And we'll be using these for the pockets. Okay, so we're going to make the pockets now, and I like to take the button part of the shirt we cut off, and because I think the buttons look cute. Sometimes they don't end up in the right places, so I have to remove these buttons and scoot them around. But you could use the other piece, you could use denim, you could use accent fabric, this is the fabric I chose, we could, make, we could have made the pockets out of that. But if you want to try to make most of it out of the original shirt, then this is the way to do it. You would cut two pockets out of this and then I'm just going to use this in tiny pieces for little patches just little accents is all I'm going to do and you can make the pockets any size you like but for me let's see what do I do with it I like to use my ruler the nice thing about plaid is you have lines to follow which is really really helpful but I'm just going to estimate and Remember to not not take your not take things so serious. Just have fun and when you're making it. It's just it's just fabric. It's something hey you found on a garage sale. It's something you found at the Goodwill. You know, dollar, two dollars, five dollars. You didn't pay a lot for it. You can you can have fun, you know? And if you mess it up, guess what? I'll show you later on how to do patchwork. Uh, um, the way I do my patchworks and you can turn it into something else you're like oops that didn't work throw it in the pile and it's still not it's life is still not over well say you got something and it was too stained you cut all that out and you can use the good fabrics so I'm going to cut that off well looks I thought I was going to cut that off oh my gosh I need a new blade don't I I'm going to replace my blade oh well okay so here we've got and I've got this one one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So my pocket here is about seven inches. You see how much I measure. Obviously my pocket can't go like that, so we're gonna cut here. And there's one button I can use. Um, plaid must not be quite straight. That's okay, hey, we're just having fun here. And then I'm just gonna come, and here's what I usually do. I get as much of this as I can. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna trim here. And what I do is you can fold that in half or you can, yeah, should have I ironed this? Probably. Sometimes when I do this sewing, I'm like, oh, that turned out so good. Other times I'm, I'm like, somebody should just take my scissors away from me. 
protect the world. And I just cut it in half this way. 